force of the atom may be used for man's destruction or his good. The process is the same. Canada, rich in uranium, is harnessing atomic science to the uses of daily life. The cobalt bomb, one of the newest developments of Canadian research, has already relieved cases of deep-seated cancer that were considered hopeless. Now being used at the Victoria Hospital in London, Ontario, and at the University of Saskatchewan, the cobalt bomb's success has brought demands from hospitals and research institutes. Here, 130 miles west of Ottawa, lies the Canada's atomic research. Directing the multi-million dollar plant, are Dr. David Keyes and Dr. W.B. Lewis. Between them, they help chart Canada's development in the functional use of radioactive materials. And here, with the noiseless violence of its million, million exploding atoms, shielded behind concrete 20 feet thick, sits NRX, the pile itself. Its core, a 10-foot tank of heavy water and uranium rods, generates a nuclear energy so tremendous and so deadly that an 80-ton lead conveyor must often be used to remove substances weighing only a few ounces from the pile. Many elements exposed to the pile's fearful blast emerge as radioactive isotopes, which must be handled with great care. These isotopes have exactly the same characteristics as ordinary elements, except that they give off radiations which allow them to be followed and identified through many chemical and physical processes. In the isotope room, the radioactive elements are tested, catalogued, and readied for shipment. For protection against dangerous radiation, technicians work from behind thick lead walls, handling the isotopes by remote control. A sample of every isotope goes through a wall safe to the Geiger counter room, where its radioactivity is measured. Isotopes from Canada can be obtained by qualified scientists anywhere in the world, provided only that their findings are made available to all. The Geiger counter is the key to the use of isotopes. It locates and measures the radiation they give off. These radiations, or rays, vary greatly in power. Some isotopes give off only alpha particles, which are so weak, a sheet of paper stops them. Others emit beta particles, which require something heavier, like aluminum, to halt them. Gamma rays, the big guns, can be checked only by solid blocks of lead. The isotope and the Geiger to chart its behavior have revolutionized many fields of research. Medical researchers, for example, have discovered that radioactive iodine not only seeks out overactive thyroid tissue, but immediately sets about destroying the harmful cells. Thanks to this isotope, the difficult basal metabolism test, especially for children and old people, may soon be eliminated. Some doctors think cancer itself may one day be defeated by an isotope for which cancerous tissue has an affinity. Industry, ever on the alert for new ideas, is making wide use of isotopes. A faulty steel casting leaving a factory undetected might break at heavy cost in money and lives. A fragment of radioactive cobalt, only an eighth of an inch square, gives off rays powerful enough to penetrate a foot of steel. Placed inside a casting with photographic film on the outside, its radiations outline the shape and nature of any invisible defects. In Canada's largest industry, papermaking, radioactive strontium, placed beneath the wet moving sheet, automatically controls the thickness of the paper. Isotopes are at work in almost every industry. In medical research,
research, no property of isotopes is more highly valued than their unique ability to take their own portraits. Radioactive phosphorus, fed to rats at the University of Ottawa and McGill, soon turns up in the bones and teeth. Coated with photographic emulsion in the dark room, slices of the bones print their own images. Such autoradiographs show the extent and direction of new growth in bones and are proving of great value in human surgery. Large-scale experiments with the Geiger counter and isotopes are affecting the lives of the woodsman, the farmer, and of every citizen. Radioactive mosquitoes dumped into a forest pool will be eaten by their natural enemies. Who these enemies are is later indicated by the Geiger counter. Soon we may grow bugs to kill mosquitoes instead of using costly chemicals. We know how animals function, but how about trees? A shot of radioactive carbon in the trunk, a Geiger counter, and you can follow the whole circulation system of a living tree. By such methods, scientists learn when fruit is ready to be picked, which fertilizers are best, the whole pattern of plant life. Through constant experimentation with different isotopes and different animals, scientists are broadening the scope of atomic tools. Now within the reach of the average researcher are studies on rickety fowl, cultivation of new parasites to destroy old pests, selection of best fodders for sheep and other animals. In every branch of science, isotopes, the greatest discovery since the microscope, have paved the way for a vast new advance. At universities across Canada, students and professors are playing a vital part in the new age, compiling a storehouse of facts on the fundamental structure of the atom. Theirs is the drudgery, the constant trial and error, the tracking down of countless leads, without which no major discovery in science could ever be made. Nuclear research, with many questions still unanswered, is particularly appealing to youth. Top men, instead of being gray-whiskered and forbidding, more often resemble McMaster University's Professor Harry Thode. His specialty is mass spectrometers. With them, he studies, among other things, the spontaneous fission of pitch blend, the ore of uranium. In other universities, British Columbia, Saskatchewan, Queens, young men may have charge of extensive programs of research, often only lightly supervised by veterans like Dr. Joseph Gray. Universities, unable to afford a pile, devise complex machines to do their atom splitting. With names like Accelerator, Van de Graaff, Synchrotron, Betatron, each is tailored to a special aspect of nuclear research. Where Lord Rutherford once did his monumental work on the nature of atomic radiations, McGill remains one of the most important centers of nuclear research. Today, Dr. J.S. Foster carries on the Rutherford tradition. With the aid of their 100 million volt cyclotron, Dr. Foster and his associates have discovered over 25 new isotopes, opened up new avenues for experimentation. Their work, together with the work of other Canadian centers of learning, is the foundation on which Canada's progress in science is being built. And what of atomic power to turn wheels and heat homes? The five civilians who make up Canada's Atomic Energy Control Board consider its early development a major concern. Mankind will use in the next 50 years more power than in all history up to now. The known economic reserves of coal, oil and other fuels cannot meet this demand. But there is abundant energy in the atom if it can be tapped. This is our problem. We are confident it will be solved. With any luck and a world mercifully at peace, atomic energy may contribute to a prosperity undreamed of today. Yeah.